would need another finance director. So yes. what we're paying you for contractual services, we don't pay for uh, IMRF for you. No. You're no like benefits. An independent no, no, no benefits. No FICA, no, no sick time, no holidays, no nothing, no lunch. In fact, <laughs> when you came in, or you actually wanted to just come in for an interim basis for a while. Kind I of came thing. in, remember, to fix GASB 34. Um, oh, and, and, that's we, something and, we I, and we sucked you in, right? That's something I meant to mention to you. We have another GASB. We have two GASBs mm -hmm. we have to work, worry about, but GASB 44 is going to be most interesting. Um, if, if any of you have, have had a sleepless night and decided to read the city's audit report, you may have read the statistical section, which contains a lot of interesting information for people who are interested in statistics. But it was essentially something we decided ourselves what to include. You know, we'd give the last 10 years property tax rates, a uh, schedule of overlapping debt for all the areas around here so people would know what the tax burden was on an individual citizen. Um, GASB 44 is requiring an expanded, a greatly expanded statistical section, which will take a good deal of time, and it'll take a lot of people to provide the data. Um, and then we have GASB 45, which has to do with post-employment retirement benefits. I think I, I have already brought this to you once about the need to have, um, we have to have an actuary value the city of Wooddale's post-retirement benefits. And you're going to say, well, what are they? We don't offer anything post-retirement, and you're right. But uh, we do allow retirees to participate in the health insurance program, and they pay 100% of the premium charged. But in effect, that is a subsidy, allowing them to be part of a group, which is part of a pool, does pass on a cost savings to them. So now it's going to cost the city about four, four to five thousand dollars, in addition to our auditor's fees, to have an actuary price that for us because we need to disclose that every year in the financial statements. Um, the Government Accounting Standards Board, a and and. Um, it, you know the intent. The intent obviously is to um, inform the citizenry. That's why we had these big Gasby 34 changes. But uh, this one is is onerous because we don't. It's we're not like GM where we're paying for somebody's insurance. All we're doing is allowing participation. But even that has an implied cost. And so, um, you know, as these things get more complicated, this is another thing that staff time needs to be directed to. Uh, it doesn't do anything for the city of Wooddale except ultimately result in a, in a probably a more informative annual report. But I mean, there's nothing nothing essential that comes back to the city. I'm going to call on Alderman Tolmy, then Alderman Subak. Alderman Tolmy. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, is this the same? Is this the same agency that can't get the numbers right for the government for the federal government? No. Do they dictate to the federal government what they have to do too? Um, I do not believe they have much impact who, on, who, uh, I mean, on the federal government. How do we get input into this group? That I guess that well, is a better question. Essentially what they do is they, they have what they call exposure drafts. When they come up with, with a proposal such as this, it gets discussed up one side and down the other by their own committees and by the actual Government Accounting Standards Board. Then they release it as an exposure draft and ask for public comment. The comment generally comes from other professionals who say this is nuts or it won't work or you know you need to do it this way. But as I said, the goal, the professional goal of all of this is to make for more informative financial statements. Um, and it, I mean, I, I can personally speak to this that I make every attempt to try to explain things in layman's terms so that people understand the, the guts of what we're talking about. But there are rules for, uh, for financial reporting that were very archaic and they did not give a complete picture and particularly when you have funds, different funds doing things, um, it's hard for somebody who doesn't do this every day to know where to look anything up. And so that is the overall goal of the, of the Government Accounting Standards Board is to try to come up with more informative, easier to read reports. But this is, this is painful like childbirth. It's taking a long time to get to a report that that's going to be meaningful. And uh, as I said, this one is statistical information which doesn't get audited. I mean, it, it, you know, we, we give our population. I might call um, the, the county and say, do you have a, a better number than 13,535? And if they give it to me, all I have to do is footnote that they gave me the number. But nobody's checking it or testing it. And a lot of the statistical information is going to be like that. I just wanted to put you on alert. The, the, the Gasbys do cost us money. And when, back when I came here in 2004, that was what I was asked to do is 
get Wooddale ready for GASB 34 so you could be in compliance. I, it, I'm going to call on Alderman Subak, and then I'm looking to get into the uh, in, into the police budget. Unless you have any final comments, no. Alderman Subak. I actually like having an independent contractor being kind of in charge of finance because it does put somewhat of independence uh, away from you and the manager, and away from you and the other department heads. You know, it's actually enjoyable if the other department heads, not for you, but if they don't get along with you, uh, that's okay with me. Or if the manager doesn't get along, because if you're independent, truly, because I think you need to be as much as the manager is accountable to the council, because you're providing us with all this data. So I don't mind if you're not under the city manager, that you're more, not an equal, but that you're independent and he's not your employer and he's you're not falling there. You know, so long term, and I hope you're you know here as long as you uh, need to be and want to be. But long term, I like that position being almost an independent contractor and not accountable just to the manager and also accountable to the council. Pleasure. Thank you, Ms. Powers. And uh, Mr. Manager, if we can now move into the police budget. As you'll note uh, on the screen, I've tried to synopsize as briefly as possible the police department budget. Uh, you'll notice that the top line says a 7.6% increase. That is this year's budget proposal uh, as submitted versus last year's budget uh, proposal as submitted. Uh, I know that right at first, first blush would seem like an unusually large number. However, I think it has to be qualified, and I'd like to go on to kind of uh, focus in on that. Uh, you'll notice that uh, in our proposed budget in front of you, our personnel costs are up 6.3%. Uh, as, uh, as Ms. Powers explained earlier, a large portion of that is due to the rebooking, the reclassification uh, of the police pension from central services back to the police budget. Uh, specifically, uh, with regards to personnel cost of that 6.3%, 2.9 of that is attributed strictly to the police pension rebooking uh, process. Uh, personnel costs is our, our proposed right now, and please keep in mind that we are going to be starting the process of uh, negotiations with our civilian employees uh, next week, uh, but we're looking probably at somewhere in the area of about 3.4%, uh, which would be reflected in the budget in front of you. Uh, the remainder of that 7.6% would be contained in your contracts and commodities. And remind, just a reminder that that uh, sum total is 1.3 percent increase. Uh, one of the big notes in the contractual side would be the new program that we are instituting, which uh, will be our red light camera operation. Uh, that program, in and of itself, is contained in the budget, and you may want to look at that. Uh, specifically, account uh, zero one. 466293 on the contractual side. We're budgeting $60,360 for that, and that would be for the vendor. Uh, once again, that, uh, the vendor has not been chosen yet, but uh, that seems the, that's the target figure that we're going to be shooting for. Also, another associated cost with that program will be an, uh, an administrative hearing function, much like what we do with regards to our, uh, towed, uh, our seized vehicle program. Uh, recently, the uh, clerk in DuPage County uh, declared that if any municipality wishes to engage in red light violation, uh, they do not want to see those traffic uh, uh, citations uh, in traffic court. Uh, they want, uh, and the legislator all, legislature also gave us the right, even being a non-home rule com community, to be able to adjudicate those matters before an administrative hearing. So those two costs right there, uh, 60000 and uh, I believe it's uh, another ten or ten five, uh, are going to be a big portion of that 1.3% uh, that you're going to see in contracts and commodities. Uh, once again, in recapping, 2.9% due to the increase of the reclassification of the pension expense. Uh, if you look at the pension expense from one year to the next, you're going to see a, a fairly hefty increase. Keep in mind that, that, uh, that uh, some of that total came out of central services. And uh, if you take that out of the equation, we're looking for a 3.4% increase in the salary portion of uh, uh, of personnel portion of our uh, our budget proposal, 
Um, I also have up there a couple of other little benchmarks that you might want to look at with regards to uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics and also Social Security uh, with regards to uh, 2006 and 2007. Uh, next, I'd like to move on to the revenues portion. Uh, with regards to our budgeted revenues, uh, we're actually be, we're going to be looking at about a 23, 24% increase in our revenues budgeted for this, bud, uh, for this proposal in front of you. Excuse uh, me. I, it, I'm going to call on Alderman Ptolemy and then. Go ahead. I, I just going back to this to, to the red light violations. Okay, um, you you stated that sixty thousand three hundred sixty dollars at one line item. Uh, what was the additional? Or what line item would that be coming in? The additional cost on that is that is that part of the professional services? That would be correct. Because that was the question where I had. You know, I mean, that was a question I had was why that particular, you know, um, line item had gone up from 10400 to twenty two. But you're saying it is for, and, and how much out of that would you say that's going for that, for the, for the uh, red light violations? Uh, I'd have to go to the worksheet just to refresh my memory. Uh, however, okay. if you look at page police five, the bottom line professional services. Yes. Uh, you'll see that uh, it's a total of 6500 and 3500 uh, 11 it's about uh, $10,100. Okay. So, I mean, I, I, and the only reason I'm asking this, okay, is because I did see, and I know you're just going to get into it now, you know, you're, you're starting to talk about your revenues now, but I did see where you're projecting 95000 in revenues just for um, the red light violation. So, if Mike, and I'm just doing this real quick, if my math is correct, you, you're basically, you're going to still, even with these costs that you're showing, you're still going to be bringing in about 24000 uh, above and beyond the red light. That would be probably a minimum. Okay. Now, could you explain what, what exactly what the red light violations is? It, it, because I, I'm wondering, is this very similar to what the city of Chicago has where they've got the little cameras on the corners that... Uh, you know, they pretend you went through them and then they digitally digitally change them. You know, uh, I can't and, speak for other, and, but yes, it would be very similar to that. And and you get a little card in the mail that says, "Guess what? <laughs> You're in candid camera, and you got to pay this." Uh, yes, that would be the same. Okay. Please keep in mind also uh, one of the intersections that we've targeted is the intersection of Woodvale and Thorndale Avenue. Well, can I ask you a question? Can we? Is there a way to capture these people that are supposed to stop on Wooddale Road, okay, before the railroad tracks, that when the light is red, then they continue anyway, they go over and they sit in the left-hand turn lane? Alderman, you can do anything at a certain cost. Okay, because you see that, you see that, well, you see that a lot. I mean, and, and to me, that's a violation. If the, if the code says, or if the, if the thing says, stop here in red, those people shouldn't be proceeding over the tracks you know, and, and I'm just wondering, would this would this catch those people too? No, or, this no. would be a fixed position. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Alderman Coles. Uh, Chief, uh, this is the same thing that Maple Grove is going to do. They are looking at this right now. They do right have. Now, I look at other cases, and they're going to do that. Same thing with uh, the city of Chicago. Uh, basically, they have a little thing. One hundred dollars. Also, uh, I've just been reminded uh, one of the uh, flexibilities of the system is not just a picture, but also a twelve-second video clip of the intersection prior to the violation. Alderman Ptolemy. I'm sorry, but I've got a copy somewhere of one that I got in Chicago that I will bring to you that. I couldn't even fight it, and that was the problem. Was I couldn't even fight it, and and I'm going to tell you, you no, yeah, I was <laughs> I was stopped at the, I stopped Alderman for with, the ten seconds. With all due respect, the attorneys are at both sides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know, but you could, but 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 I guess my question is, will will people be able to to fight these? I mean, I mean, in Chicago, you can't. One of the reasons for the administrative hearing is for that process 
uh, the subject, if we do come to a conclusion through the administrative process, it's incorrect. The remedy would be then to seek uh, uh, further adjudication in the circuit court. Okay. And and then once you're ready to do it, you're still going to come through us before you implement it. Is that correct? Yes, I will advise the council before we we actually get it done. Okay. So so then we'll go through the logistics of it and whatnot. So I'll, I'll take one more question on it and then we'll go on to the next thing. Alderman Subak. I think in Chicago you can challenge it, but you do it administratively. So they could administratively, we'll have a hearing with an attorney here, just like our towing right now. And if then they're upset with that, this, that decision, then they can appeal to the circuit court. It's absolutely correct. But on the, for the estimate of 90,000, uh, how many violations are you estimating? And again, most of the time you're getting six months to pay or nine months to pay or until they do pay. Are you thinking you're gonna get this thing up and running and actually see revenue in year one? Uh, I've been assured by the vendors that we've had interviewed at this point that uh, from the time the contract would be inked, uh, the system would be up and running within 90 days. The intersection that we're looking at is not covered by IDOT, it's covered by the DuPage County Highway Department. Uh, IDOT right now, as with the Naperville case, is, is vacillating with regards to equipment, right-of-ways, and so forth. Uh, DuPage, however, uh, is moving forward with it. Uh, we would probably be adjudicating our first cases uh, within 45 days after the first citation, and um, uh, it would be a rather rapid deployment. So, I mean, because again, if you're proposing this year 95,000, then you're proposing in eight, uh, 2011 to be at 102, I think, again, you're looking at almost a full year this year. And I don't know if you're going to, Mike, I don't think you're going to get a full year. We were hoping uh, to have this thing up and running by July. Okay. And then backing up to your court fines, every year this is a battle. Uh, in 05, you had uh, 525,000. And then in 06, Looks like we had 454. I remember last year, I think your number was 425. You said, I just don't know with the overweights if we can continue to do the rates that we can. Uh, this year, you've proposed 400,000. Can you explain why you've proposed 400,000? I'm glad you raised the question, Alderman. Um, much to my uh, displeasure, uh, and I'd like to distinguish this, this is not our city clerk, but the uh, clerk of the county. Uh, Presented, I believe it was to the mayors and managers conference in May or June of uh, this last year. Uh, their change over from a uh, uh, a fee based to a percent based distribution of fines to the municipalities. Uh, they cited Wooddale, and I don't have the uh, information in front of me, but I believe the manager and the mayor were both present at that meeting. They impacted. Uh, they said based on their new plan that the way they're impacting it with the citations that we write. Uh, it was going to have an impact on Wooddale of a decrease of about $125,000. And that's one of the reasons why when you see that line item this year, it's at the, it's at the point that it's at. It's because we still don't know how these are going to impact us. I can tell you that uh, as we monitor our cases, we're down now to somewhere around about 46% uh, rate of return. Uh, everybody else uh, at the county level uh, takes place in, in a lot of these fees, and uh, we're seeing a, a diminishing point of return on this. Okay. Uh, but once again, this was a decision that was made outside of not only mine, but also the DuPage County Police Chiefs. And uh, I believe this was uh, this was brought forward on, and not, on being on, uh, uh, revenue neutral. And I believe that in the case of Wooddale, this is going to be exactly the opposite. What is the uh, police chiefs doing? Kind of counter? Are they going to see Mr. Ketcheruba saying, "Look, you're stripping us of, of again, a, a, almost an unfunded." mandate back to us that we have to pay our police officers, we have these expenses, but you're taking more of the money? There's been several conversations uh, with regards to that. I know uh, I was trying to uh, talk to Mr. Kacharubas this afternoon. Uh, uh, the, pre the opportunity didn't present itself. Uh, several chiefs are concerned with it and have voiced their opinion uh, and their concerns back to their uh, municipal unit. And then as far as the uh, administrative fee, the impound, we're, we're projecting this year uh, 207. Uh, why would you think that's going to decrease? My guess is the number of driving my license revoked, suspended. Once uh, again, uh, because there was a recent court ruling on this. Okay. Uh, we've actually started uh, on a couple of cases, uh, missed opportunities that uh, where we wouldn't uh, impound the vehicle because of uh, certain conditions that the courts have been putting on us. So once again, uh, it's one of those elastic funds. We can't exactly say what's going to be continuing in the future. However. I think we hope for the uh, we hope for the best, but also expect the worst. Okay, thank you.
Any other questions, comments for, for the Just chief? on revenues, we're st we still have expenses to go through. We're not, or is he done on everything? Are you, th are you through on everything in Al's question and answer, or do you wish to touch on a few more I th things? I think we've been touching on revenues and uh, expenses right along, so. Okay. Um, it, I'll recognize Alderman Wesley, then Alderman Subak. Alderman Wesley? Okay, in, in this budget, I don't see the money that has to be put aside for the radios that we're going with the nationwide, I mean, all of the other departments. <laughs> I thought we talked about so much was coming out of the budget every year, and where is that coming out of? Alderman Wesley, that'll come out of the Equipment Replacement Fund, and we'll be doing those budgets on March the 8th. Okay, may, may I make a suggestion? If it's coming out of the Equipment Replacement Fund, why could we not, before that comes to us, could we take that violations for the red light, let's put that camera, could we take that money and put it towards that program for it doesn't come out of capital project, I mean, for it doesn't come out of that. Therefore, it pays no, itself down it won't come out of capital line. projects. It would come well, out of the general fund, but and that's what will happen. But it, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't deposit the revenue in there directly because the equipment replacement fund is, a, is in a, the category called capital projects type funds, okay? So it, it would just be an interfund transfer. And then what we would do, if we're going to do it over three years, which I think was the original suggestion, we would restrict the fund balance in the equipment replacement fund to the tune of whatever has been set aside. So that in 2010, when the chief needs to make the purchase, the money's already there and earmarked. Similar to the way we had to uh, restrict the fund balance in the capital projects fund for the uh, Build Illinois grant, which the city received in the year 2000, and we've been slowly applying it to the IDOT uh, Metro project, okay? But we have to keep reserving fund balance because we haven't spent so it all. What, what I'm trying to say is, and, and I agree the way it should be done, but shouldn't it be in a separate light item just to airmark for that? For we don't, therefore, in case this council change or down the line that they don't take that money and is, is there a way we could Once just, we restrict it in the fund. But could we restrict just that fund instead of taking out that, I mean, could we take a, add another line in the budget and say, whatever this red camera makes, that money goes for the replacement or, or to do this radio system that we have to do there for down the line. If the money comes short, you know. Well, it's my understanding, first of all, that um, the, the cameras will, I mean, the, the radios will need to be purchased in 2010 if, if the city wants to be interoperable, okay? So if the red light program was a complete fizzle, the city will still need to come up with the money. That's why what I'm suggesting is it is an appropriate general fund revenue, the red light violation program, just like a court fine is. It's appropriate to be counted in there, but we could certainly make, as part of the interfund transfers, a transfer specifically for the radios and then restrict the equipment replacement fund balance for that All radio that. savings, okay? okay th that's and fine. And it won't get forgotten. Th that's, that's fine. Fact, I, I, just, it up. I just, I mean, if he's, because there's, there's an opportunity to, to fund a separate item that we're going to have to purchase down the line instead of looking for that money later down the line. Thank you. Before I call on Alderman Subak, then uh, Mr. Mayor, I want to do a quick health check on, I know we need to get, get through questions and answers for police. And then, Mr. Manager, did you say we're doing um, w which other fund tonight? City services. Now, how long do we anticipate city services done? And, and, and I'd like input from the council whether we're going to um, perhaps hear the overview and then save questions and answers for the next time, or do we want to get through everything tonight? Um, Mr. Manager, how long do you expect uh, cent central services to go? And, unless there's some, some questions, we can go rather quickly. Uh, some of these... Um, Different issues come out, and right. and they have to be explained. But uh, you you've had the you've had some time to look through the line items, okay. so it should go pretty quickly. Okay. I think we should do it Thursday. Thursday, start a meeting at seven. Do it. Okay. So so I think we can all agree we're going to wrap up the police department tonight. But are we going to go into uh, central services or not? I'd like some input, and 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 we'll come up. Okay, <laughs> Alderman told me. Yeah, I think I think we should go ahead. I mean, truthfully, when you look at when you 
if, if everybody's looked at all these budgets, I mean, everything that we've been presented with, I don't think there's anything that's really glaring. I think the overall budget, what's been proposed is, is a good budget. Uh, there may be some, some questions, but I think maybe what, instead of like having Frank get up and, t and talk about his department or Gary get up and talk about his, why don't we just focus on those questions right off the bat so we can get it done? I think we could try it. Because honestly, when you look at, when you look at the revenue sides and, and the expense sides, I mean, I think this is a, probably one of the better budgets I've seen in, in years. In years. Okay, um, any other input on um, it, if we just plow through it? And okay, I'm going to go in that direction unless I hear other uh, concerns. Okay, then I'm going to call on Alderman Subak, then uh, Mr. I'll mayor. defer. I have four points. I, I can defer to the mayor <laughs> so he doesn't forget. Just to clarify. Right. Thank you. So you're welcome. <laughs> uh, just for clarification, my understanding is it's unclear whether we're going to have to pay for the radios or not, that there may be Homeland Security funding to cover that. <laughs> or ESTB funding. Uh, we just had, uh, this afternoon, it was a point of conversation uh, at our membership meeting for the DuPage Chiefs Association. Uh, that program, uh, the uh, RFP was put out and the Motorola was the, uh, uh, the vendor that was uh, awarded by the ETSB and that's for the system. Uh, it's been known right along through the interoperability com uh, committee that the system, that's the uh, uh, the towers and all the infrastructure will be supported by ETSB. However, the hard equipment will be, and will, it's always been continued to be told to us, it will have to be supported by the individual municipality. Uh, they're in the process right now of uh, hiring a project manager to get this going. They wanted to try to get this out 24 months. Today they were saying it's probably overly optimistic and the 36 and the 2010 target's more of a reality. Uh, four questions, Chief. Did your uh, revenues for the local DUI understand that there's going to be a delay for collection, or did you assume collection right away? As a matter of fact, uh, we started uh, prosecuting in December. Uh, we got a little bit ahead of this. Uh, our prosecutors already uh, uh, settled three cases out that were uh, started in December and January. Uh, it's also my understanding that uh, uh, as these cases are adjudicated and disposed of, uh, the remedy, uh, the the remedy, the fines on the matter will be settled up front. Right now, uh, when they're going through the state's attorney's office, they are at the termination of the probation, which sometimes uh, would be a year and a half, two years down the road. Okay. And that's not from the time of arrest. That's just from the time after the the case has gone through the system. But we might have people getting DOIs that might say, "I need a year to pay," and the prosecutor might have that discretion. They might they might actually have a year to pay. Uh, it's I not, think it's that not unheard that, of on a DUI. Yeah, but I, I think that that's going to be the rare situation because I think uh, with regards to some of the uh, uh, the way that these cases will be handled, they, they are going to try to get these disposed of as rapidly as possible. Last year you gave us figures on uh, that many of the police officers were going to be retiring, and therefore I think we authorized two additional uh, positions. Uh, remember last year, because I don't, uh, what your projections were for retirements and what ones did or did not come true? Uh, we still had, uh, from last year's budget, we have been a unable to fill the one open police officer's position that we've had. We've gone through the list, we've gone through numerous candidates, and there's been problems either with backgrounds, psychologicals, and or other, uh, in, other issues in the process. Uh, currently, right now, we are going to be interviewing a candidate that's passed the psychological polygraph and has his oral interview scheduled for Monday evening. It's more than likely that we'll probably be making an offer and sending that person to the academy in April. We've recently had a, uh, uh, a position vacated in our police department through retirement. That's also become available. We are actively looking, and uh, we're hoping to have somebody online either by June or July. So to answer my question, last year, how many tell I remember last year, I was in, I, half One. the department was going to retire. Oh, with within regards, the next within the next eighteen months, not with, half, but a large regards, portion. With regards to future retirements, and this year right now, I have nothing inked in front of me, but there's a very good possibility we'll have two people leaving. So last year, last year we thought we'd have one, and you actually got that one. Did retire? Yes, we did. All right, and then one of your line items is for the uh, District Seven after school program. Uh, in the way of background, this is the uh, program that started as the community resource center, then it changed where we got the school district more involved. Um, We've been funding this at a cost of ten thousand dollars for the past years, and uh, this is highly, mostly uh, personnel cost uh, for this. Uh, Alderman Wesley last year raised some valid concerns when we got the report from about there are children on this uh, wait list, 
uh, that are not getting in, and therefore I uh, went to the 